All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Hidden Name Tournament. We have four top StarCraft players. You don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. They don't know who each other are. We've given them Brood War Pro Gamers names. We are straight into our second match of the Hidden Name Tournament between a mystery Terran player. It's a top pro gamer who you know, but you don't know who it is. Boxer is going to be the name they're playing under the bottom right side. Of the map and in the top left apparently you can't name an account jadong anymore because that's a naughty word according to battlenet so <laughs> jadonk who i'm just gonna call jadong the entire time but uh <laughs> sc screw you screw you blizzard <laughs> all right very nice all right guys so uh zerg versus terran match here uh, of course, we found out Bisu is waiting in the grand finals for whoever wins this match. Uh, if you guys didn't already see that one, sorry, I've spoiled it. Whoops, go back and check it out. But uh, yeah, go. It's, it's worth watching anyway, honestly. Those games have some twists and turns that you do not expect. But uh, winner of this will play Bisu. We did, of course, find out um, the reveal of who the Terran player was from that other match as well. I guess if you didn't watch it, I won't spoil that just yet. For anyone watching on YouTube after the fact or just tuning in live in Boxer, it's going to go Command Center first. Now, this is super favored in the Korean scene lately. Um, we've been seeing a lot of this from Beyond has been spamming Command Center first like no tomorrow. I mean, all the players really around the world have been, but I guess I just watch so much Beyond, and Beyond has been like, Command Center first, Command Center first, low ground double barracks Reaper. And I, I guess Maru's been pretty similar as well. But uh, anyways, Jadonk is going through, just rallying to the gas, standard solid opening, Overlord out the front. Um, we're not going to show control groups of the players, because that sometimes gives it away for the hardcore nerds who they're like, study their favorite pro gamers control groups and the moment they see something particular like oh they keep their first overlord on seven they're the only player that does that and they just know who it is kind of spoils the fun in my opinion of, of trying to guess who it is um drones are down there on the natural what do we got command center it's gonna finish up return those minerals reaper on the way so this was uh of course no scv scout i don't think when you go command center first there's ever a reason to really go for an early scout I also wonder, does this Command Center first build, like, straight into Reaper, does it automatically die to one base Ravager? Because it's been a while since we saw one base Ravager, but I feel like if people are doing Command Center first on, like, Babylon, one of the shorter rush distance maps a lot, then one base Ravager might come back. That normally hits at about 3 minutes 15, I believe it is, with three ra Ravagers, and you wouldn't even see it, because the, the Reaper goes out here. If the Ravagers are coming in here right now on the left side, you'd basically get across the map, Ravagers would run in right now, it's interesting obviously it's a big gamble you only do it when you're not the favorite and you want to try and get a free ser a free map win and if your opponent's a bit predictable with always going command center first on a certain map you would never see that just one of those funny interesting kind of meta things that i'm always thinking about is if your opponents become too predictable with their openings is there a way to just get a nice easy free win right is there a way to punish your opponents because if you let your opponents get really comfortable doing the same thing every game they get so good at that particular strategic line and part of the strategy in starcraft is punishing them for being predictable right predictability if you don't punish it it can get out of control early creep tumor in the main we've got creep spreading out the front lots of creep already so already very creep focused, uh, even at the cost of slowing down some lava injects. Well-timed third base, pretty good overlord pattern as well. The only real area where it's missing is this high ground because the overlord instead is down there on the pillar. The advantage of being on the pillar though is they don't actually know when they're being watched, right? The Hellions don't realize there's an overlord up there having a bit of a cheeky perv. Ooh, Reaper came in and got a creep tumor. Very nicely done. Would like to get the other one, but it's already finished planting itself in the ground. That is a third command center. Viking is building here. Overlord comes in, sees the star with no add-on, and tries to make the slowest getaway of all time. I uh, feel like we're watching someone on a mobility scooter try to outrun the police right now. It may be futile, but by golly, they're going to try anyway. You could do it, buddy. Hellions and Reapers did take a little bit of damage. Did they get another tumor? Nope, still only one tumor's gone down, but no creep spreading up this high ground just yet. And, oh god, the police managed to catch him. Oh god, the police managed to catch him! Overlord goes down. Alien Reaper comes forward. They managed to get one of those creep tumors. And what have we got? Three more barracks coming down. Double engineering bay and the wall off. Very solid build order. Really standard, very confident build order as well for Boxer. I feel like Boxer's actually just playing really rock solid. Um, uh, you could say it's a little risky because there's no Banshee, but I think 
Is your opponent, when they don't even know who you are, are they going to all in? Is a, is a top Zerg player going to all in you? Game one of a best... Nah. No way. So go command center first. Play Viking into Liberator. Go straight into three barracks. Play a three command center. If you're confident in solid bio play, heck yeah, this is a great way to do it. Finds an Overlord in the main. Won't be able to confirm that kill. Quick reaction from Jadong. Jadong moves over and says, Boxer, mate, you're a pro gamer from yesteryear. You want that Overlord, you're going to have to pay a price. And, well, that price apparently is not losing the Viking. Well done. <laughs> okay, Boxer calculated that well. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, barely. Oh, it goes down the last hit. Do Vikings not have an armor, guys? Apparently, Vikings don't have any armor. I thought that would survive that last nine damage queen hit. It was on nine hit points. Apparently, Vikings don't have any armor. I, I never really thought about whether they have armor or not. I just felt like the, uh, the queen could not kill it, but apparently it could. Oh, good scan. Getting rid of a lot of tumors here. But man, the creep. Look at where it's spreading everywhere. Because the boxer hasn't applied fierce pressure, Jadong is just out of control in the creep, man. Uh, queens do nine damage versus air, guys. Seven range anti-air attack. Reactor does go down there as well. Lair is on the way. 1-1 one, one upgrades and uh, Bailing Nurse, but only two gas. Oh, wait, sorry. There we go. Third and fourth gas are on the third base. It's easier to take these gases because often you have extra drones popping at the third, so you might as well just use the overflow of drones on that base, especially if you're busy defending Hellion Arrest. Double Drop's going to hit the front along with a Hellbat Morph available in about 10 seconds. The question is, do you just try to clear the creep in the middle? Or are you actually trying to go for the cancel on the fourth? Five banelings are morphing. Zerg needs more than that. Jadon could be in trouble. Boxer doing a nice little timing attack here. Another five banelings quickly morph, but the 1-1 one -one of Zerg is going to be done before the 1-1 one -one of Terran. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I think this is really good for Jadon. Jadon gets a nice boomy and does take out a bunch of those marines. A few aliens and marines do survive, but there's nothing in the bunker. The Lings are going to counterattack Jadong with the Killer Instinct. Liberator comes in the main, is denying mining time, but not really doing any direct damage right now. The redrop on the front, but that means the Drilly Boys are getting taken out. A massive run by Jadong. Absolute killer mobility, multitasking, and Boxer does get caught out by that. Boxer did not think that counterattack was going to hit as hard as it did. Looks like Boxer was also maybe a little slow to move these Marines over to the third base. And Jadong is all over this game right now. 2-2 upgrades, bailing speed, and it has 70 workers versus just 50. Taking out so many depots and infrastructure at that third base. Very nice plays here for Jadong. Ling's going to be moving down that left side right now. We've got the Queens over there as well. Interesting to see. Ling's going to come down to the left side. We've got the bio on the right. Ling's going to see if they can dive into that base. Two, two extra upgrades are on the way. That depot needs to get raised. This depot is pretty good. It'll give early warning by a moment. And you know what? Good Widow Mine Spready as well. So if Jadong tries to overcommit to this, they could be in trouble. Um, the Widow Mines could get the big boomies. On the other hand, Jadong is a fantastic micro player in Brood War. I imagine whoever his avatar is here, or I guess the player using him as an avatar, would also be pretty decent. Oh, what's the Terran camera? Oh, God, 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 God. Whoa, the depot gets up. That spotting depot was absolutely huge. I mean, these banelings can still blow the wall up and get inside, but that buys valuable seconds to respond. Oh, God, army on the front as well. Jadong's going ham right now. Banelings gonna go up the ramp. Double depot drop has happened on top of the ramp, which means there was a few supply blocks earlier in this game. The engineering bays are burning and box are getting overrun and swarmed. Jadong just out of control. Looking fantastic. GG. Well played. All right, guys. Going into map number two. And it's on a very Zerg favored map, I would say. So unfortunate that they lost their map pick at the start. In the top right, it's Boxer. And in the bottom left, he looked strong. He looked solid. Turgid as a rock. It was Jadong. I mean, Turgid and a rock. That doesn't go together. Very. <laughs> it's a really bad analogy, man. Rocks don't swell. <laughs> Turgid is like like when a river banks are like overflowing. It's a really bad description. You guys know like when someone when someone like looks up a word in the thesaurus and then just spams it out at the wrong time. Like that's what I just did. I just did one of those like it's like that's not how that word is used, pig. <laughs> <laughs> all right well command center first again apparently boxer loves that command center first and on this big map i think it makes perfect sense uh hatch gas port. so um one of the things is jadong here could actually go 
uh, skip the Zerglings, right? You've played against Command Center first. You could expect it again on a big map. So what I'm looking for for Jadong is waiting until they see a Reaper, and when they don't see one, just building extra drones off 21 or 22 supply, and that'd be really awesome. Uh, okay, Barracks, Gas, looking really, really good. Just a no-scout build again, but uh, definitely going to be interesting to see on such a big map. Do we see Battle Mech? I mean, Battle Mech has looked fantastic. I saw Serral die to Battle Mech off against uh, Clem on this map the other day on Ladder. Actually, yesterday on Ladder, which is really cool. Serral's been streaming a fair bit recently. Um, it's two barracks openings. So this is going to be the 2-1-1. The -on Command Center first into 2-1-1, -on just jumping straight to the bio stage. Not demotivated or losing confidence after the way the last game went. I like to see that. A lot of players, they lose a game like that last one. They're like, ah, oh, crap, I can't can't play this player player in, in you know straight up bio bio versus mech or something like oh i need to you know do a surprise timing or something but this just looks like no nope, just gonna go straight to bio off a of cc first other game i went more hellions this time we'll just skip the hellion phase don't feel like i got that much damage done with them no worries third hatchery will go down here for jadong and jadong is skipping those zerglings like i talked about perfect adjustment for jadong which means rather than wasting two lava on Zerglings, guess what? You get two more drones, you get a bit more money, and it really helps you keep pace with the command center first. This is amazing. My man. Overlord Speed is on the way. Ooh, Overlord Speed. Okay, I mean, this makes sense. You don't know what your opponent's going to pull out. It's a bad map for Terran. And uh, basically just getting Overlord Speed is going to make sure you don't get killed by 2 port BC, by Hellbat Marauder I've seen on this map. Uh, I even saw, I think Kua was doing 3cc Hellbat Marauder on this map. The the famous Gabe build from Valencia that eliminated Serral last year from the EU stage. Serral after that sat out Valencia last year. Said he had some, uh, had to get his mind straight. Said that. Nah. Don't think I'm playing well. Got to, got to get back in the groove. Take a t take a season off. Get back to it. And Overlord C is two one one into third command center. It's a dead Overlord though. Good catch by Boxer. Says, hey, you already paid for the Overlord speed. Now you're also going to lose an Overlord. It's an expensive opening for Zerg, but keep in mind he made Overlord speed instead of Zergling speed. So Jadong basically took a risk by not having Ling speed and said, it's fine. I'll just skip that. Defend with just Queens for now. And uh, I'll put the 100 minerals, 100 gas into something else. And since this build can't punish because there's no Hellions running in, ends up being pretty similar. You just end up spending that money on your Link Speed a little later. Single Evo Chamber for Carapace for Jadong. And good creep spread once again. One, two, three, four, five tumors are out. It's not a tumor. Well, it absolutely is right now. And uh, I'm hoping that Boxer here is an oncologist because they are going to need some severe chemotherapy on this map. This map... I actually struggle to spread the creep because there's so much space to spread creep on it. On the other hand, I can only imagine what it's like to be a Terran player trying to clear a map that's like 60% covered in creep here. I feel like if there was ever a map to see a Raven opening on, this has got to be it. Like, or, or even a random Raven in the mid game, right? Like, swap a starport onto the tech lab, build a Raven, put it back on the, the reactor to start building Metavax again. It's awkward, no Terran likes doing it. But hey, we got used to building barracks to swap onto the factories. Why not, you know, in TVT to oh, uh, swapping the tech labs and reactors around there. So why not? Why not do it? Double drop moves out across this map here is going to hit. Pretty similar to the normal 2 on one timing. That's what's so beautiful about this command center first build. It can hit still about 520 with 16 marines, 2 medevacs, and you've got a third base behind it. But the Linglongs, Linglongs are going to say ding dong. Who's home? The SCVs say, oh god, that's not great. Another backstab getting three SCVs and the building depot. Can he punish the Zerg? Jadong doesn't have any Banelings, but that's a lot of Queens, and there is a lot of Lings building behind it. Just gonna play it very cautiously is Boxer. Siege tank on the high ground will cover that mineral line. Marines are just hanging out over there. Some exposed Queens might be able to stim it in focus fire. Let's see, maybe Jadong's a little slow. Boxer? Ooh, I'd be tempted. I would definitely be tempted. Oh, wow. Okay, the Lings poke around. They see the Marines. They don't want to take that fight. 1-1 one, one upgrades for Jadong. Lair and Baneling Nest on the way. Up on 4-5 gases. Not bad at all. That's going to be a lot of production. 4th and 5th barracks here. Boxes building siege tanks. 
I always felt like this map was best for Widowmine play, so you can have more mobility. Good stutter stuff. That's three Marines with combat shields. Oh, this is the Demuslim timing. The Demuslim timing. <laughs> oh, but just enough Lings and Queens to defend. Yeah, I think you got to pull back as Boxer here, right? Boxer? Boxer? Okay, Boxer, I think almost overcommitted there, but at the end of the day, it does take a two to one trade, keeps some Marines and Medivacs alive. There's a huge indentation on the creep here. That's a really good timing. We just have a, a scary number of Marines uh, with the combat shields being added in as well. And there we go. Those three extra barracks are very late, but was nonstop production off the initial two barracks. Very good Marine timing. And now Jadong is at 61 drones. The fourth base is not up. First 63 SCVs. If Terran can squeeze a fourth command center in or just commit to a straight up push, why not? Marine tank moving down that right side. Lings get spotted. Very important that Boxer responds to this. Oh, oh, no Stim. I think Stim could have killed most of those Zerglings. Oh, the Medivac tries to save it. That's a great catch. Jadong gets a siege tank, takes half the artillery away from the push. Jadong's, Jadong's not building drones. Oh God, Boxer needs to pull back. Jadong uh, right now is actually planning a, a big flank. Jadong is saying, come in and I'm going to flank you with this army. The Medivac sees it with another tank. And at this point, yeah, look at that. Boxer realizes, uh-oh, this is kind of a scary position. I think Boxer should actually just stay back. Just stay back and try to intercept the flank, if anything. Great Marine split off from Boxer. Barely doesn't see those units on the left side. That tank sticking out a little bit. I feel like it could be slightly further south. Marines are going to dive on the Queens. But look at that, guys. We've got Ling Bane coming in. That is what we call a 360. Saves one of the tanks. Oh, the Medivac gets shot down. That had the tank in it, though, so doesn't save any of the tanks. Very nice moves. Jadong does hold on. However, Jadong is not ahead. Jadong's only on 60 drones. He's building a macro hatch. Has the fourth base coming up. Equal supply. Down eight workers. And Jadong would like to bust Boxer, but you ain't attacking it into that. Bunkers, tanks, and the fourth command center coming up in the natural. Oh, double liberator as well. I remember about a year and a half ago, Oliveira was the guy who every time he was pushing on the front, maybe a year ago, maybe not a year and a half, but uh, he would always send two libs around the back. This is back when his name was Time. And it was actually really good because he'd set up a siege on the front and be applying heavy pressure. And then the Zerg would get hit by two libs and they'd really freak out and take big damage. Very hard to deal with. <clears throat> okay, Marines gonna pick up. Gonna move down that left side. Triple drop, eh? Oh, unfortunately for him, a single pervert up there says, Hey guys, um, oh, this is awkward. They're like, yep, yep, okay, that is awkward. Yep, turn around. The Overlord clearly spot it. You can see Jadong noticed. Plus two melee is almost finished. Carapace is already done. The upgrades are ahead for the Terran player Boxer. Boxer has a second factory on the way. But it feels like Boxer is going to be maxing out on mostly Marines. And guys, there's no eight barracks. It's only five barracks still. Boxer is going to try and push the right side of the map, which I think does make a lot of sense. But Jadong's still only on 62 drones. Oh, Jadong's playing a reactive all in. I assume Jadong must have droned. Jadong has not all in. Jadong is waiting for the Terran to push. There is a massive Zerg army. The Terran does not realize the Zerg has a way lower drone count than normal. The Zerg is hunting for a perfect engagement. Oh, me, oh my, watch out, watch out. Huge, huge army on the left side. Watch out, Terran player. Watch out, Jadong! Jadong's coming in from all sides. Oh my God, so much Ling Bane. The Marines are trying to hold their ground, but by golly, that is a lot of Marines. But there's a, a lot of Ling Bane. The Marines have triple stimmed, which is a problem. The command center lifts, saves five of those SCVs, and that was a big victory for the Zerg. However, is it big enough? He needs to do more damage. He needs to do more damage. The SCVs are there. The Marines are all in the red. They've stimmed themselves. Oh God, drug addiction is bad. Drugs are bad. Don't do drugs, MK. 14, 15 SCVs go down in total. Can he survive Boxer? This is a giant all-in from Jadong. Jadong was far behind in this game, but used a very surprising strategy of massing army and waiting for the Terran to move out. I call that a reactive all-in because that's 62 drones, not droning at all, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then the moment Terran moved out, sprung the trap. He knew he couldn't beat Boxer if Boxer was set up defensively, but Terran always wants to move out with a timing attack and was so patient and just committed in a situation where most Zergs would get antsy and want to build drones. Jaden was like, nope, if I build drones, I'm not going to have enough army. I need to have a big enough army to surround. Beautiful play. All right, guys, down here in the bottom right side of the map. That was a much closer game, but Man, not having Widow Mines. If you, if you realize that style and you've got Hellbats or Widow Mines, you'll do much better. 
But uh, just completely caught off guard. And all those tanks getting flanked. The creep highway being so far across the map. Boxer getting caught off guard. And that's really frustrating because I think Boxer played a fantastic early game and put themselves in a good position. But Jadong responded well, went for the all-in, and now going for a gas pool opening. What? Jadong. I think Jadong might be expecting a proxy barracks, but could also do like a, a Ling speed attack as well. Now, this is Babylon. So, uh, looks like a hatchery goes down. It shouldn't be a roach build. It could, technically, but usually you don't need the gas this early if you're doing a roach build. Usually it's a quick link speed. Um, this is not a command center first, though, so I feel like the Reaper actually could scout what's up and be completely safe against it, in which case it's just a slightly less good opening compared to a hatch first. It's not the end of the world. There's only two links building. It's not like it's, you know, eight Zerglings yet or anything like that, but... It's over 100 gas. There we go. Link speed does start up in a minute 50. We'll have about a three minute link speed. Not bad. Only one more game to... Uh... <laughs> Bit of drama in the live predictions. I don't know if there's a way to do that. To fix that. Uh-oh. All right, guys. Marine is on the way. People lost their bacon. <gasps> GG. It's okay. It might, it might not matter, assuming you closed it as the Zerg winning. If, if Jadong wins this game, it won't matter. But if we get the reversal and Boxer wins three games in a row, that's when there'll be a riot in the chat. Give us our bacon back. We'll see. Making a 3-0 comeback is very difficult, guys. The Reapers do come back. But there's two Marines there. It should be more than enough to cover that. Ling speed's on the way, and it looks like about 12 Zerglings in total. Ling sneak out the left side of the natural. Ooh. And I think seeing no third, Boxer is immediately going to know, okay, go home, go home, go home. Watch out. Those Marines are well positioned there, but they're going to pull back to the high ground, which is actually really smart. Ling speed kicking in. Ling's coming in. And there's even a bunker on the high ground. Very safe play by Boxer. Look at, oh, the Reaper goes through the main as well. Ling's run in. Jadong's like, yeah, get him! And he's like, aww. <laughs> I mean, the command center will have to lift. This does delay SCV production a little bit, but obviously a pretty big commitment for Zerg. And now Hellions are pumping. The bunker gets sold. The Reaper is still alive on the other side of the map. Jadong starts a third base. Very delayed, and this opening has not paid off for Jadong. But I like that Jadong's playing aggressive and mixing some things in here, especially the reactive aggression in that last game was a very clever way of playing. I've often talked about the, the 60 drone massling bane off Forgas and then just wait for your opponent to move out strategy. Ooh, Marines are going to get surrounded. Surprising that he sent the Marines forward instead of just poking with the Hellions. Does lose those two Marines as a result of that. And uh, the Hellions could poke out, but still playing very cautiously as Boxer. Boxer doesn't want to deal with these young, fast kids like Jadong surrounding him with their Zerglings. Baneling Nest is on the way. Wait, wait, wait. And it's a, it's a Bane Bust. It is a Bane Bust all in. Jadong is relying on the Hellions, moving out, surrounding them, and getting the win. So this is another reactive all in. Because if you just run in with the Ling Bane, the Hellions will outmicro you and it won't work. But two Hellions and a Reaper are moving across the map. The Banelings are going to morph up there. And they need to just keep sneaking Lings out. The thing is, there's only three Queens, so it's very hard to give the illusion of a normal macro build. Look, there's a fake drone transfer, guys. They're spreading out the drones as well. They tried to, you see that? They spread the drones out. They bring the queens to the front. That looked a little suspicious. That looked a little suspicious. People want to see the APM. I'm not showing APM or control groups, guys. You guys can figure it out. <laughs> like, show us the APM. Give show us the control groups. Give us the cheat code to the players. Are. Banshee on defense, Judy. Jadong's not going to be happy with that. Jadong. Oh, the wall's not up. The wall's not up. Boxer, watch out. Boxer has a Banshee, but doesn't have the wall up. And the Banelings can blow the wall up either way. Look, the Overlord's just waiting. Jadong is just waiting, waiting, waiting till the Banshee moves out. And is just trying not to show their hand. The Hellion's coming in. There's still only two Queens. Only two Queens? Alarm bells have to be ringing. The Depot gets up. Oh, God. Evacuate to the high ground. Get out of there. Get out of there. Here comes a crazy Bane bust. It's a giant all-in. Lings and Hellions try to get home. 
Bailings are going to go ham on these SCVs. The SCVs are trying to get across the map. The Banshees will clean this up eventually, but how much damage can get done? Ling surround a bunch of the Hellions. Only five Hellions left. One more of those. Looks like it might go down in a moment. This is, of course, going to get cleaned up, but 20 workers have gone down. The droning st has started, which means this is a transitional... Uh, there is a transition that's possible from here. The Hellion Micro is very good, though. Boxer was not born, yet, born yesterday. He knows how to drive these Hellions just like their Vultures, and they're going to get through the gap in the Minerals. Oh, okay. Looks like this around happens. The Hellions will take out a fair few Lings with them, but they're not getting the big juicy lineup to kill everything. Banshees will, of course, close this out, though. And that does feel like still a good position for Terran. Third command center is up. Three barracks is up. The engineering bays have one upgrade started. The marines can clean up those last few zerglings. And let's take stock. There's a spore crawler on each base. A lair just started. There's only five queens. Yeah, this is a really bad spot for zerg, guys. You might be like, but there's a 15 worker advantage, pig. Yeah, but the banshees should be able to grab a few of these drones. Actually, there's a few spores between the bases, which is good. And the problem is just the upgrades. The third command center building SCVs and dropping mules. And when a fourth and fifth barracks get built, there is going to be an onslaught. Like the first timing push of the Terran is going to be so hard for the Zerg to stop. Zerg will be able to get a good economy advantage, but will they have enough time to turn that into the correct upgrades and everything that they actually need? We'll, we'll see. All right, guys. Banshees around the top side. Let's go. They get two drones as well as the extractor, which is not too bad. Queens are moving out here. The Banshees aren't really finding anything. I would love to see them just taking up residence between the base. Maybe not as much activity as I'd like from Boxer. On the other hand, Boxer's cleaned up the macro and has rewalled the natural, which is very important. A bit of a supply block on 77, but uh, poo poo happens, as they say, guys. The Banshees come in and get two more drones. And do we see a supply drop? Looks like, no, nope. just going to wait for those depots to finish. 61 workers for Jadong. Interesting. Double drop's going to move down the south side. Banshee's in the north side as well. Armory does go down to start the 2-2. Overall, I think it's okay for Terran, but I do think these supply blocks and slight hiccups in the macro are hurting. I also think Terran needs to go across and get some damage done and look at the way Jadong is just stopping him from unloading because those marines could beat those zerglings if they're unloaded with 1-1, stimmed, and fighting in a ball. But Jadong buys time by making them drop far away. And if, if you can secure the fourth, that's huge. Whereas right now, it wasn't really creep to the fourth. Now there's enough creep to the fourth. The queens can get down there. Jadong is doing such a good job of actually just slowing down that from happening. Marines going to move forward. Ooh! Ooh, 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 Okay. Good, good, good defense by the Donger. The Donger's looking pretty solid right now. <clears throat> Definitely uh, looking nice. Plus two bioweapons goes down for Boxer bunker as well very defensive setup i think that last game has made boxer a bit paranoid and now jadong actually finds himself in a very playable situation that ling bane attack earlier killing 24 scvs i didn't feel it was enough at the time but i think they just prolonged the pressure long enough the third command center got delayed landing so long and even though there's a big upgrade advantage for terran it looks very playable if this creep can continue to spread a little bit further i feel pretty okay about the terran's chances in this game uh, there was an Overlord there, but look at that. Jadong even pulling back single Overlords to save them. There's no creep on this far north path, though. I mean, Jadong's position is a little gimped in, in that regard. There's also... Baneling speed is done. What? Okay, pulls back. Gets a Baneling. Forces a transfuse or two. Only loses one Marine. Not too bad. Banshee's down here. Pick off a, ba uh, a Baneling. And those Marines, of course, hanging out just off creep as well. Creep spreading down the south side very well. No fourth command center in sight. Do we see three more barracks or a fourth command center? That's my big question about the Terran's intentions. I mean, we saw Massling Bane in the last game, so I'd love to see a second factory build on this reactor. I think if, if Boxer does that, add some Widow Mines or Hellbats in the mix, it's going to smash a heavy Zergling style that we saw from last game. Heavy Zergling is a very good comeback style, right? One, two, three, just four gases. So very mineral heavy style. But just looking for the engagements, it's not 62 drones, but it's 68 this game. It's not that many more workers. There's no fifth base. Good save. The siege tank on the high ground makes the Zerg pay a little bit of attacks for that. And I like that these Marines are in the middle of the map, just keeping and opening in the creep spread. Trying to pull home. Boxer playing so conservative right now. Feels like just wants to group everything up for one big push down the south side. And that is the killer tank position on this map. Banshee's cloak and Marines are there. The tanks are sieged. Yeah, you don't want to chase into that, but the Banshees do go down. Nice move by the Donger. 
Whereas if those Banshees were cleaning up backstabs, they'd be great. Notice now Jadong says, hey, I killed those Banshees. Let's go past on the north. 2-2 two, two upgrades are about to kick in. It's going to be 2-2 two, two versus 1-1 one, one for a long time. It was actually 2-2 two, two when Reyna, um, when Jadong, who I'm calling Reyna now, because I'm actually pretty convinced it's Reyna. I was trying not to say it, guys, but I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I think this is Reyna. Just look at that crease spread. Let's see if he goes for it. I'm locking in my guess. Like I said, I don't know he's the player, but I'm locking it in. Look at that backstab. That could be, it could be Scarlet. She's been playing this style as well, but we're locking in my backstab, guys. I'm, I'm like trying not to give my guesses away to color you guys, but like I said, I think it is. I don't know. We'll see. I still don't have any idea who the Terran player is. The Marine tank on the side. We'll go back. Boxer and Jadong. I'll keep using those names so we don't give away my Terran guess. I have, I have one Terran guess actually, but I'm not going to say it just yet. 2-2 two is on the way. This push gets slowed down. I feel like Jadong's done a great job of slowing the push down. And that fourth command center is moving out. We're going to see a late game. 3-3 three, three versus 2-2. Two, two. Zerg has no follow-up. Zerg has... Actually, could this be... Oh my god. You know what? Radata is a player who plays like this as well, actually. Radata, aka Vanya, is one player who I've seen sit in the 60 worker range in mass layer tech units more times than any other Zerg. Oh! Giant bailing wave! Okay, good pullback by Jadong. I thought Jadon was about to do a Ragnarok of Banelings. I thought we were about to see 40 Banelings off creep in a ball rolling into tanks. That was a bad move for Jadon still, but it was not as bad as it could have been if they kept chasing off creep there. There's still a big backstab there. Boxer is looking slick. Boxer is looking sexy right now. As long as you raise the wall. Oh god, run the SCVs from the third and the fourth. Raise the wall. Oh god, oh god, oh god, this leveling bane. Terran's gonna take a lot of damage. That makes this army need to do damage. But great pre-spread on the units. Beautiful pre-spready. 22 workers go down on the third base. It looks like Boxer's gonna send back some Marines. There's no planetary. Oh, Banelings! 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 Oh no! The SCVs are gonna have to do a spready. Okay, well, Boxer, you better get it done with this army right here, right now. This might actually be Ragnarok. I, I have to see in those Banelings, man. They're, they're surprisingly effective, running off in big balls off creep. Um, the Marines, the tanks, the libs trying to pull back. You've got to use this giant spready. Great hot pickup and forcing the fourth to evacuate. Zerg back to three bases. I just knocked the front of my mic off. And uh, that extra base is up in the north side as well. Big link counter in the bottom side. The planetary not getting up is a huge bummer means oh no fresh mules but the bio stims over scares that off this pre-spread is not going to get dealt with i feel like if jadon could respread creep i'm really doubting the rain i guess now because i'm like the creep spread died on that north side and the whole thing that made me think it was rainer was the creep spread in uh in the earlier games but this game not so much now i'm thinking maybe more radata oh god the bailings coming in the lings are gonna get a surround on some of the marines but the marine marauder on the left still gets a good trade the libs get a siege up these tanks are raining down death and destruction captain chad hammer with 29 kills herself there the panzer ace uh she's looking fantastic and she, yeah that's it that's it jadon can't hold on there that is a beautiful win. We, this series is not going to end. And you know what? Those people who missed out on their predictions live where they were betting the stupid bacon currency in Twitch chat, if this ends up being a box of 3-2 reversal, you're all going to be mad because we just stole your bacon. Uh, five kills, eight kills, ten kills. Very nice. Whoa! Going into game number four. Boxer in the bottom right is going command center first. And I was talking about one base... Ravager roll in. Well, guess what? Jadong is 12 pulling, guys. I don't think it's Ravagers, though, because the gases would have already gone out. So Jadong is just going to do a 10 Zergling rush to kill the command center. Oh my god. Now, the thing is, just like a Zerg defends it, you can pull SCVs and beat this. It's a micro war, but I think if you get, I think, I think you can get a Marine out soon after it arrives and you can micro with your SCVs. The question is, do Terran players know how to micro their workers as well as, as, well as Zergs? I'm thinking more and more the, the Vanya Radata, who apparently whose name is Main, Wayne now, and that's 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 it. People are asking, why is the name J-Donk? Uh, apparently, yeah, so basically I tried to name it J-Dong and Blizzard wouldn't let me because apparently Dong is a bad word, guys. That's right. Um, so it is what it is. <laughs> J-Donk. Uh, six Zerglings here. It definitely could be Euthermal as well. For those who don't know, the Zerg does play like Euthermal, as does the Terran. Oh, man, this is scary. How do you react as Boxer here? Is Jadon going to take it? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You're going to have to pull the boys. 
Has Boxer ever played this scenario? If you don't play at 5k MMR in the NA ladder, you may never have experienced this situation before. Building a Reap is unfortunate. A Marine gets out a lot faster, does damage. I assume the command center is going to get cancelled. And cancelled and rebuilt on the high ground, that's probably the best way to handle it here, rather than pulling the workers. But it does put the Zerg at a significant economic advantage. The question is, I mean, you are still down seven workers right now. It's just that obviously the Zerg can drone up quickly in the follow-up. That SCV, if that SCV goes down, that's kind of a bummer. But the Reaper's here, and the SCV should get out of there. Good job. And you're going to get reacted Hellions out pretty quickly. Ling speed will be very late in this game. There's still chances to equalize this game. I'd love to hear any experts in the chat. I see you Thermal there and a few others. Any Terran players, I, I've never seen this situation. Command Center first getting cancelled. Who's, who's ahead? I imagine it's Jadong. And is it like being, oh, you're two drones ahead. It's pretty even. I have no idea. I will admit this is a situation I have zero understanding of. Um, if anyone actually can share some expert advice, even if you're a Platinum League player in chat, but you heard Gabe say something on his stream, feel free to echo it now. 3cc does go down for Boxer. I think it's a two worker advantage. I think it's a small advantage, but it really comes down to the next step to see what happens here. One thing we know is Boxer loves Command Center first and Jadong is a bit of an abusive play. I guess the third hatch down, Ling's ready to stop the run by. Not a lot of Hellion production because of the third command center coming down. And you know what? Actually, the big mistakes Box has been making this series have been supply blocks. But this game, with that quick third command center, I don't think we're going to get those supply blocks for a little while. Cloak coming in. Roach Warren! Oh, this Zerg plays every style, guys. Jadong is going to play a mass Roach Ravager on Gressman. And we've seen a lot of Roach Ravager, guys. Serral was looking really stressed on his stream the other day. And he was saying when he got Roaches in a game, oh, this feels way more relaxing. I, I, I like This is a much better game. When he, whenever he played Terran uh, against Terran with Roaches, he was like, oh, this feels better. Like, he actually said that. And I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, lots of players have been mixing that in. Still only one Gas Geyser for now. Four roaches coming out. Where, 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 where? This is 45 drones. This can't be aggressive. There's no ling speed. So this is just a few roaches to defend the Hellions. And then there should be a lair. And extra gases need to go down sooner rather than later. They could pressure across the map. But luckily for Boxer, they've already got a Banshee out and a second one on the way. And they're hiding them. They're going to wait for two Banshees in Cloak, which is perfect. Because it means the Zerg player might try to pressure with the roaches. And if those roaches get to your side of the map, the Banshees come out. They get a bunch of roach kills free of charge which would be amazing. So Jadong, going to go across with a couple of roaches, see exactly what he can do. I love that the moment I said the Rainer guess, I'm immediately like, eh, this doesn't really feel like a Rainer play. <laughs> I don't think I've seen him do this roach pressure. This is like what Dark does. Oh, they see the Hellions. The Hellions are going around and the roaches are like, yeah, this isn't going to work. There's a Banshee there. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Go home, defend. We don't have Ling Speed. There's a few Slowlings that can kind of stop the run by. You got to be very cautious though. No Hellions going down just yet. I think those Banshees can move across the map pretty well. And uh, looks like the Banshees are going to fly right over that Overlord. Very conservative play for the Terran. Boxer going into five barracks play. 1-1 one, one upgrades do start. The Evos have not yet begun for Zerg. Now, there's a few ways you can play here as the Zerg. Most players uh, recently just go a handful of Roaches, make them into Ravages, and then swap into Ling Speed and Melee play. And with a quick fourth base, I would say that's probably the case. But even Solar recently actually went from here and just played Mass Roach Ravager straight to Hive, straight to Lurker Viper. So that old Dark style is actually getting more popular with a wider base of players now. Very nice play by Boxer. Okay, very good. Hellion Reaper in the north side as well. Coming on in with the Banshees. Going to get a few of these drones. Gets one, gets two. Oh, Hellion! Oh, the Queens are blocking. The, the drones can pull back from there. Very nice blocks. Jadong says, who needs Evo Chamber walls? I have Queen walls, mate. The Banshee's tr trying to come on in. Oh, look at that. Gets a couple of drones. Very nice drone damage. Feels like the Hellions kind of got shut down, but the Banshees make up for it. And most importantly, they survive. I talk about this a lot. A laser really uh, changed my view on that, where he said, Banshees, doesn't matter how many drones they kill, because Zerg can replace those. What matters is if they're alive all game, because you can never do backstabs without the Banshees making it prohibitively expensive. And that's why keeping Banshees alive for an entire game, it's 
Like an oracle, it's the longer it lives, the worse it is for the Zerg, the better for the Terran. If at any point you throw those Banshees away, it opens up opportunities for the uh, the, the player to, to do what they can do. And bunkers at home? Wait, wait, wait. Foxes going double bunker and a fourth command center. Welcome to Turtle Town, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I think at this point, after the last few games, Box is like, okay, this mother trucker just makes four bases of mineral workers and then does nothing but makes Massling Bane every game and transition doesn't transition a hive. So I think Box is like, okay, if I just go four base, I can play late game on Gressman and I'll be looking really good because this clearly is not my opponent's favored part of the matchup. Nice reaction with the Zerglings though. Gets a Marine, damages the Medivac a little bit. Spreading that creep to the top to get a spore right on the edge and one down here would be very effective. Marine's moving down there as well. Ooh wee Couple of queens out in the open. Always a juicy pickoff. Gonna rotate to the bottom left as well. This map has so much room to cover. If you really work all the angles, there's so many different paths that the Zerg's gotta to try to spread creep on. Another two queens go down. Oh, back to four queens, baby. These Banshees engines screaming in their hellfire. Backlash there. Backlash rockets are screaming into action. They get an Overlord down here as well as a few more creep tumors. Does this drop? Ooh. Boxer's looking good, man. Boxer's looking really tight. I feel like Boxer, now that they're, they're set up very solidly with the bunkers at home, they feel like they're able to unleash on the harassment. Double drop is behind the natural. I don't know if Jadong realizes that's back there. It looks like it's slipped by the Overlord vision. And a fourth base is going to get taken. Both players taking that front fourth base. Gives you a nice, easy fifth base behind it. And then a sixth base and a seventh base in reasonably tight formation, at least from each other. Oh, welcome to Mulehammer Town, boy. Drop goes into the third base. Unfortunately, the natural would have been the more vulnerable target. Going to try to drop there as well. This is really just making the Zerg multitask, but does lose a few Marines for that one. Drop in the north is still available. Those Banshees are still alive, which is the important thing. I wouldn't mind them going back and repairing as well. Massive Ravager Ling Bane army. There's actually quite a lot of roaches as well. Looks like Zerg wants to attack, and there's not that many Marines at home. The Banshees aren't there. Oh, time for an F2 home, I think. Time for an F2 up here to defend. But there's a planetary, man. Planetary's with tanks and a good marine army. Oh, Ling's come in for the flank. The SCVs do try to run away. Great evac on those SCVs. Bailing's coming in from the left side as well. The bunker tank on that side. Will it be able to stabilize? My god, it's just so much Ling Bane. The counter drop does run in though. Double drop on both sides is going to do big damage. But my god, the Ling Bane gets it on the workers. Oh, massive hits. But the Marines are going out on the other side of the map. If the Zerg can scramble together a defense, they're going to be fine though. Look at the supply! What the hell? Jadong is the lord of the Zerglings! These Ling Bane timings, that just slayed! Jadong said, I'm Max, you're not, and you've got four Metavaxa worth of Marines on my side of the map, and the Banshees are out of position, gets in there with that slip slap, and manages to take down Boxer in an action pack series. Welcome back, and we are ready to reveal the player. So first of all, guys, we've gone and asked Jadong, the Jadonger who won that match. We've said, Jadong, it's time to lock in your guess for who you think Boxer is. And Jadong said 100% spirit. You guys let me know in the chat. Everybody chant what your guesses is right now. Lock them in. I'm gonna say that sounds like a pretty good guess. I don't really have a strong feeling this way or that. It's so hard for me to tell. I feel like that was all the Zerg doing weird, crazy builds and, uh, and and all the Terran just trying to hang on for dear life. But uh, a lot of people said it's actually Boxer. A lot of people do say Spirit, and a few people have been saying it's definitely Gabe or Keller Zur. Special, a few of those. Let's find out who it actually was. Hey, how you doing, mate? Yeah, hello, hello. GG, bad luck in the games. Yeah, a little bit sad out of the games, especially last game. Yeah, 100%. Well, it was pretty slick, pretty good series back and forth, though. And, uh, you know, it's been it's been good to have you on playing it. And thanks so much for playing the tournament, mate. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Cheers, brother.